James III was King of Scots from 1460 to 1488. James was an unpopular and ineffective monarch owing to an unwillingness to administer justice fairly, a policy of pursuing alliance with the Kingdom of England, and a disastrous relationship with nearly all his extended family. However, it was through his marriage to Margaret of Denmark that the Orkney and Shetland Islands became Scottish. His reputation as the first Renaissance monarch in Scotland has sometimes been exaggerated, based on attacks on him in later chronicles for being more interested in such unmanly pursuits as music than hunting, riding and leading his kingdom into war. In fact, the artistic legacy of his reign is slight, especially when compared to that of his successors, James IV and James V. Such evidence as there is consists of portrait coins produced during his reign that display the king in three-quarter profile wearing an imperial crown. The Trinity altarpiece by Hugo van der Goes, which was probably not commissioned by the king, and an unusual hexagonal chapel at Rustelrig near Edinburgh, perhaps inspired by the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. Early life James was born to James II of Scotland and Mary of Gelders. His exact date and place of birth have been a matter of debate. Claims were made that he was born in May 1452, or 10 or 20 July 1451. The place of birth was either Stirling Castle or the Castle of St Andrews, depending on the year. His most recent biographer, the historian Norman MacDougall, argued strongly for late May 1452 at St Andrews. 5. He succeeded his father James II on 3 August 1460 and was crowned at Kelso Abbey, Roxburghshire, a week later. During his childhood, the government was led by three successive factions, first the king's mother, Mary of Gelders, then James Kennedy, Bishop of St. Andrews, and Gilbert, Lord Kennedy, then Robert, Lord Boyd. Relation to the Boyd faction The Boyd faction made itself unpopular, especially with the king, through self-aggrandizement. Lord Boyd's son Thomas was made Earl of Arran and married to the king's sister Mary. However, the family successfully negotiated the king's marriage to Margaret of Denmark, daughter of Christian I of Denmark in 1469 as a part of ending the annual feud to Norway for the Western Isles, and receiving Orkney and Shetland. When James permanently annexed the islands to the crown in 1472, Scotland reached its greatest ever territorial extent, marriage. James married Margaret of Denmark in July 1469 at Holyrood Abbey, Edinburgh. Christian I of Denmark gave the Orkney and Shetland Islands to Scotland in lieu of a dairy. The marriage produced three sons, James IV of Scotland, James Stuart, Duke of Ross, John Stuart, Earl of Mar, Brayake with the Boyds. Conflict broke out between James and the Boyd family following the marriage to Princess Mary. Robert and Thomas Boyd were out of the country involved in diplomacy when their regime was overthrown. Mary's marriage was later declared void in 1473. The family of Sir Alexander Boyd was executed by James in 1469. James and the Lords of the Isles James became powerful enough to attempt to manage the Lord of the Isles who ruled over the Western Isles and Highlands of Scotland in 1475. The treaty made by the Lords with England at Ardtornish in 1462 was used as evidence of their usurpation of royal power. John of Islay, Earl of Ross, Lord of the Isles was censured for making his son Angus his lieutenant and for besieging Rothesay Castle in the Isle of Bute. John, Lord of the Isles was ordered to appear for trial in Edinburgh on 1 December and when he did not attend, he was declared forfeit. The Earls of Lennox, Argyll, Athel and Huntley were ordered to put the forfeiture in practice. John, Lord of the Isles, came to Edinburgh in July 1476 and the forfeiture was rescinded, but he resigned to the Crown the Earldom of Ross. Lands in Kintyre and Napdale, and the officers of Sheriff of Inverness and Nairn. James then made John a Lord of Parliament as Lord of the Isles. 
In April 1478 Parliament required John to answer for his assistance to rebels who held Castle Sween against the Crown. In December John received confirmation of his 1476 charters, first alliance and then war with England. James's policies during the 1470s revolved primarily around ambitious continental schemes for territorial expansion and alliance with England. Between 1471 and 1473 he suggested annexations or invasions of Brittany, saint Ong and Gelders. These unrealistic aims resulted in parliamentary criticism, especially since the king was reluctant to deal with the more humdrum business of administering justice at home. In 1474 a marriage alliance was agreed to with Edward IV of England by which the future James IV of Scotland was to marry Princess Cecily of York daughter of Edward IV and Elizabeth Woodville. It might have been a sensible move for Scotland, but it went against the traditional enmity of the two countries dating back to the reign of Robert I and the Wars of Independence, not to mention the vested interests of the border nobility. The alliance, therefore, was at least one of the reasons why the king was unpopular by 1479. Also during the 1470s conflict developed between the king and his two brothers, Alexander, Duke of Albany, and John, Earl of Mar. Mar died suspiciously in Edinburgh in 1480 and his estates were forfeited, possibly given to a royal favourite, Robert Cochrane. All Albany fled to France in 1479, accused of treason and breaking the alliance with England. But by 1479 the alliance was collapsing and war with England existed on an intermittent level in 1480 to 1482. In 1482 Edward IV launched a full-scale invasion led by the Duke of Gloucester, the future Richard III, including the Duke of Albany, styled Alexander IV as part of the invasion party. James, in attempting to lead his subjects against the invasion, was arrested by a group of disaffected nobles at Lauder Bridge in July 1482. It has been suggested that the nobles were already in league with Albany. The king was imprisoned in Edinburgh Castle and a new regime, led by Lieutenant General Albany, became established during the autumn of 1482. Meanwhile, the English army, unable to take Edinburgh Castle, ran out of money and returned to England, having taken Berwick upon Tweed for the last time. Restoration to power James was able to regain power by buying off members of Albany's government, so that by the December 1482 Albany's government was collapsing. In particular his attempt to claim the vacant earldom of Mar led to the intervention of the powerful George Gordon, 2nd Earl of Huntley, on the king's side. In January 1483 Albany fled to his estates at Dunbar. The death of his patron, Edward IV, on 9 April, left Albany in a weak position, and he fled over the border to England. He remained there until 1484, when he launched another abortive invasion at Loch Mabin. Another attempted return has been argued to have occurred in 1485, when accounts suggest he escaped from Edinburgh Castle on a rope made of sheets. Certainly his right-hand man, James Liddale of Halkeston, was arrested and executed around that time. Albany was killed in a joust in Paris later that year. On 5 March 1486 Pope Innocent VIII blessed a golden rose and sent it James III. It was an annual custom to send the rose to a deserving prince. Giacomo Passarelli, Bishop of Amola, brought the rose to Scotland and returned to London to complete the dispensation for the marriage of Henry VII of England. Death in battle. Despite a lucky escape in 1482, when he easily could have been murdered or executed in an attempt to bring his son to the throne, James did not reform his behaviour during the 1480s. Obsessive attempts to secure alliance with England continued, although they made little sense given the prevailing politics. He continued to favour a group of familiars, unpopular with the more powerful magnates. 
He refused to travel for the implementation of justice and remained invariably resident in Edinburgh. He was also estranged from his wife, Margaret of Denmark, who lived in Stirling, and increasingly his eldest son. He favoured his second son instead. In January 1488, in Parliament, James tried to gain supporters by making his second son Duke of Ross and four lairds for Lords of Parliament. These allies were John Drummond of Cargill, made Lord Drummond, Robert Crichton of Sanker, made Lord Sanker, John Hay of Yester, made Lord Hay of Yester, and the knight William Ruthven, made Lord Ruthven. But opposition to James was led by the Earls of Angus and Argyll and the Home and Hepburn families. James's eldest son and heir, the future James IV, was delivered into the hands of the rebels by Shore of Sorky on 2 February 1488. The prince became the figurehead of the opposition party, perhaps reluctantly, or perhaps provoked by the favouritism given to his younger brother. Matters came to a head on the 11th of June 1488, when the king faced the army raised by the disaffected nobles and many former councillors near Stirling, at the Battle of Socky Burn, and was defeated and killed. Persistent legends, based on the highly coloured and unreliable accounts of 16th century chroniclers such as Adam Abel, Robert Lindsay of Pitscotty, John Leslie and George Buchanan, claim that James III was assassinated at Mill town, near Bannockburn. Soon after the battle, there is no contemporary evidence to support this account, nor the allegation that he fled the battle, nor the tale that his assassin impersonated a priest in order to approach James. A story is told that, on the eve of the Battle of Socky Burn, Sir David Lindsay, son of Sir John, Lord Lindsay of the Byras, presented James III with a great grey horse that would carry him faster than any other horse into or away from the battle. Unfortunately, the horse threw the king during the battle, and James III was either killed in the fall, or was finished off by enemy soldiers. Whatever his other faults, James does not seem to have been a coward nor did he avoid conflict or manly pursuits. He actively pursued military conflict in 1482 and 1488 with disastrous result, and frequently proposed unrealistic schemes to take armies to the continent. It is most likely that he was killed in the heat of battle. James is buried at Cambuskenneth Abbey. Titles, Styles, Honours and Arms Titles and Styles C. 1451 50 seconds 3 August 1460. The Duke of Rothesay. 3 August 1460 to 11 June 1488. His Grace the King. Fictional portrayals. James III has been depicted in plays, historical novels and short stories. They include Price of a Princess by Nigel Tranter. The book takes place in the years 1465 to 1469. The main character is Mary Stuart, Countess of Arryn, a sister of James III. She is depicted joining her husband Thomas Boyd, Earl of Arryn in a mission to the court of Christian I of Denmark. The two negotiate the ceding of Orkney and Shetland from the Kalmar Union to the Kingdom of Scotland, Lord in Waiting by Nigel Tranter. The book takes place in the years 1474 to 1488. It covers events of the reign of James III, seen from the perspective of John, Lord of Douglas. James III is depicted influenced by one William Chevis, the court astrologer and alchemist. Douglas would rather have Mary Stuart on the throne. The Admiral by Nigel Tranter. The book takes place in the years 1480 to 1530. It covers the career of Andrew Wood of Largo and the formation of the Royal Scots Navy. James III is depicted favouring Wood with the title of Lord High Admiral of Scotland. James III. The True Mirror by Rona Munro, a co-production between the National Theatre of Scotland, Edinburgh International Festival and the National Theatre of Great Britain. The James plays, James I, James II and James III, are a trio of history plays by Rona Munro. Each play stands alone as a vision of a country tussling with its past and future. This play concentrates on James' relationships with his wife Margaret, his court favourites and the powerful lords he has alienated. 
The Unicorn Hunt by Dorothy Dunnett, Volume 5 in the House of Niccolo series. To Lie with Lions by Dorothy Dunnett, Volume 6 in the House of Niccolo series. Gemini by Dorothy Dunnett, Volume 8 in the House of Niccolo series. Ancestors.